Hey noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today we continue our fun accent challenge. So last time we tried to see how difficult it was for me and for you to understand someone from Glasgow, Scotland speaking uh, with their own accent and I mean it was quite difficult but today we are trying with Jamaican. Now of course when we say Jamaican uh, I think we're going to do a little bit of a mixture of things in the, sense, in the sense that we will have someone speaking English but with a Jamaican accent and then we'll probably run into uh, quite a bit of I think what's called patois which is kind of a Creole uh, language that isn't necessarily English it's based on English and many other languages and it's a mix just like any Creole languages and so that's gonna happen too for sure. So let's see how much we can really understand. And let's start with this first video called Jamaican Phrases. You'll find a link in the description. Let's go. Wow, go on, guys. This is Tevin, the Jamaican Patois boss. I know we are such a pretty day, which brings us to... I love the accent already. Jamaican, that's, that's what it sounds like to me. I have no idea what he said at the end. I understood the beginning and then he kind of lost me. Let's see. What we'll be talking about in this video, some phrases that only a Jamaican would understand. So. If you want to find out more, stick around. We're so forward. Stick around? If you want... Okay, so, I understand him right now. He's speaking English and the accent is not too difficult in this very moment. But then he said something at the end. I have no idea what he said. Let's go. Guys, so the moment you meet a Jamaican, you will quickly discover that we are a passionate and an expressive bunch of people. Especially when we do so in the lovely Jamaican Patois. The language is constantly attracting great interest from people that is craving a taste of our rich Jamaican culture. But what is... So yeah, so far I'm understanding him, although I don't know if this is the same for you, but I, to understand him, I have to like, focus. I have to focus and try and isolate the sounds, but I do understand him. He's speaking English, but perhaps he's going to tell us, speak a little bit the, the actual Patois. Well, let's see how different, different it is. The most intriguing about Patois is the many sayings and expressions that we use. And at times, some of these phrases can be difficult to translate. But never fear, the Patois boss is here. So guys, let us take a look at some of these phrases, the meaning and how they are used. Number one, Chabba Dede. So chubber dede means danger is lurking and is often used when... Oh, that's actually kind of funny because, of course, he used the word in Patois, unrecognizable, sounds more like some kind of African language. Of course, I don't, I don't know what that means, but then he, he translated it into English and I still don't know what he said. <laughs> so I did not understand the translation. Let's see if I can get it from the rest of the explanation of some sentences. Warning someone to be careful. It could either be careful of a person, be careful of a place, or even be careful of an environment. Okay, so it means be careful. Interesting. I don't know why I didn't get. Did you get the translated version that he that he used? That's I, I didn't. But now now I know. Really cool. Guys, let's take a look at Chubber Dede in a sentence. Me say she pretty see, but think twice ya, ka Chubber Dede. And that is saying she's very beautiful, but there's danger if getting involved. Number two, Yazimi. Yazimi means do you comprehend what I'm saying? Or basically, do you understand what I'm saying? This basically. So um, I'm already noticing some of the characteristics with the way he articulates his vowels and uh, that make it very distinctively Jamaican, at least in my ear. But another thing that I'm noticing is every time he's switching into actual patois, I understand absolutely nothing. I don't know if it's always the case. Perhaps there will be some, some sentences that you might be able to get if you're coming from an Anglophone perspective. Not, not that I do, but you know, I speak English, so I suppose. Let's try. This is often used at the end of a sentence to make sure that, you know, a person really understands what you're saying. So let's take a look at using me in a sentence. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get the latest video them when they release. You see me. And that is saying, make sure you... I see. So, um, yeah, so I'm noticing that uh, some of the characteristics of the accent, of course, so, I mean, again, his accent. I don't know if he represents every person in Jamaica. In fact, I'd like to change video now. What I'm noticing is that the, the vowels are extended, which I find to be very interesting, uh, rather than being double vowels uh, or like vowel shifting, like it normally happens with either a British accent or an American accent, some Australian accents. In this case, I see we have a, and when I say British, I should say English accent because it does happen sometimes in the, even in the north east of England, so yes, yeah, Southern English accent, because in Northeast England and Scotland, sometimes the vowels are extended, but he does say nor and e, o, e. I'm noticing these sounds, very cool. Let's change video. Rotten blows and skirt, it's your brother, Rasta Francis. And right now, we're there in a Coventry right now. We are doing the Can You Speak Jamaican Challenge. And 
So I only understood can you speak Jamaican challenge, but another thing that I'm noticing is that perhaps one of the reasons why I'm having trouble recognizing some of the sounds is because his T's, THs, when they are in in uh, when they're pronounced like the like brother, mother, become a full on d d d d which is probably what's throwing me off a little bit. Right now we want to find out can people in the Coventry speak the original patois, you understand? Mm. Right. Let me switch up to English. So boom! Yeah, obviously we're in Coventry right now. Basically the challenge is I'm giving people three simple sentences. If they even now becomes no right no so everything becomes shorter in a way no not shorter but like single goes in from double to single vowel and that's something might need some getting used to there is a very interesting video that i'd like to share with you now uh, because this is kind of mind-blowing my wife told me about it i didn't know but there is this russian girl i believe she lives in jamaica and she's married to a jamaican and so she knew no english whatsoever and she picked it up from a jamaican and you can totally tell. Check this one out. So they be in the supermarket. I'm looking for brown rice. So compared to basmati and jasmine, brown rice is much more cheaper. Some say, all right, I'm gonna go grab it and try it. And guess where the trick? Guess where the trick? So I'm sit down and boil it. So 45 minutes, I look on the pack. I have to boil it for 45 blood clot minutes. This is so fascinating. So, of course, if you are Jamaican, tell me how good she's doing, how well, how much Jamaican she sounds. But to my untrained ear, I think it's absolute 100% that she picked it up in Jamaica or from a Jamaican. Like, the, it would take me, now that I've heard a couple of Jamaicans speak, and then I hear her speak, I'm like, did you learn English in Jamaica? That would be the first thing I would say. Now, again, I'm not a native speaker, so I don't know if there is something that perhaps in her intonation sounds different to you if you are. But uh, please let me know because to me she sounds like really authentic. Who oh, have so much light to boil it, so much gas to boil it. I don't have to go on with this brown rice. I don't want to be healthy. I don't spend so much money on just a rice to boil it. No, that a foolishness. I don't want it, even if it's cheap, I don't want it. Take it back. Wow. Yeah, that was fascinating. But there is something that I'd like to talk about, uh, perhaps on a dedicated video today. It's a little bit of a short uh, video, but this is something I'd like to talk about on a dedicated video, how, you know, the place where you learn your first approach to the language is definitely what's going to mark um, the, the way you sound when you speak a language. But the question that could be interesting for a dedicated video would be, but can you change it if then uh, you are exposed to other accents and and how difficult of a process would that be? So far, so so far, so good. The Jamaican accent is absolutely beautiful. I like it very much. Of course, when you one thing we're noticing is that when you jump into actual patois, I start understanding absolutely nothing. And perhaps that one will require its dedicated video. But as, as of just a first impression, and uh, upon both hearing a person with a Jamaican accent speaking English and also the occasional patois, I have to say that I am having some difficulty understanding, but I think that once I get used to the actual vowel and consonant clusters and how they are represented in, when it comes to understanding the actual pattern behind it, probably wouldn't be as difficult to, uh, to get it. And I think that from my experience so far, I will need more videos, but from my experience so far, it's definitely easier than understanding a Scot. Uh, for example. But what is your experience? Did you understand everything? Did you understand more than I did? Or was it harder for you uh, to really pick up what, what they were on about on these videos? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for joining Metatron's Academy.